Facebook did it, so LinkedIn's going to do it. And let's be honest, I'll pick on them, but that's a great idea. Facebook is a very widely used and popular ad platform. Why wouldn't you do what they're going to do? Anyway, topic of today's video is the LinkedIn ads library. Just like Facebook's, it allows you insights into all of the different ads that are running on LinkedIn either now or that have been in the past. And there's a lot of different use cases for this. So today I want to talk about what the LinkedIn ads library is, show you what it looks like, and then talk about some ways that you can use it. We're going to start on the homepage of LinkedIn's ad library. We're going to do a few things here before we actually get into the library itself, but this will kind of set up what you can expect once we get into that, and then hopefully proactively answer a handful of questions that you might have depending on how much we do or don't find in the ad library itself. The first thing is that the LinkedIn ad library is very easy to find. It's at linkedin.com slash ad dash library, and we'll have that link in the show notes below. But as you can see here, the library is intended to offer transparency and advertising by giving you a searchable collection of ads. But what does that actually mean and how can we use it? So the first thing I want to walk through is how we will use the library when we get there. We're going to start by looking for a specific company or advertiser name. We can then add individual keywords to help refine the search. We can then narrow down our search by country or the date which the ads have run in recently. And once we get done with setting up all of our filters, we'll just hit search. But first, let's talk about some of these frequently asked questions, because I do think some of them will be useful. Now, what is the ad library and how to use it? It's kind of what we're going to talk about today, but there's some important information in here. This is a place where you can search for ads that have run on LinkedIn and ads remain in the library for one year after their last impression. So that means you've got a pretty good length of time to be able to find ads, even if they haven't run in a little bit which we're going to go a little out of order because I think the next important question then is how far back can I search ads? And the ad library has ads that started or were created on June 1st of 2023 and beyond. So anything before that date is not going to be included in the ad library. So unfortunately we can't go back further than that, but I think we've still got a pretty good range that we've got going in here. Do you need an account to use the library? No. Anyone can have access to LinkedIn's ad library, whether they have a LinkedIn account or not. What's the information we're going to be looking at? You're going to get to see all of the basic information about the ads that were served, including the advertiser information, the ad format, and the ad creative. There's a little bit more information about ads that were targeting the EU. That's going to include additional information, which is going to have stuff about ad impressions, targeting, and the dates that the ad ran, just because EU is a little bit more advanced on all of the privacy regulations. This question about ad formats doesn't really give you any information, but we'll talk about ad formats here in just a little bit. Ads will show up in the ad library, usually within 24 to 48 hours of their first impression. And then any changes or updates to the ads will also take 24 to 48 hours to load in the platform. And the last piece I think that somebody might have a question about is, can I opt out of my ads showing in the ads library? And as they say, as a part of the commitment to creating a safe and trusted ad experience, no, you cannot opt out of having your ads in the ad library. If you're going to have your ads run on LinkedIn, they're going to be a part of the ad library. It's just the way it is. But overall, I think that's a pretty low cost of doing business. So let's start to look at how we can use the library itself. I get targeted with quite a few different ads from companies on LinkedIn, and they really do run the gamut of what they're offering. But one of the ones that I've seen recently that had a few different formats is an investment company called iShares. So I'm going to use that for the example today. So in the company name field, I'm going to type in iShares. And for now, I'm not going to do any additional keyword searches, country searches, or date. We'll do that in just a little bit. I'm just going to start by searching. You can see up at the top, there were 1,027 ads that match the search criteria I added for iShares. And now we have access to see all of the different ads that iShares has launched recently. They've got what looks like a single image ad about ETFs. They have a video about climate. They have a single image ad about climate. And then now we have a what looks like a carousel ad. And then we also starting to get into some foreign language ads as well. But you can see there's quite a range of different ad formats messaging, color coding, all sorts of things that iShares has going on. So we've got a pretty robust list here. Just for the sake of me being able to read the ads, I'm going to go ahead and narrow down the country just to United States. 
While I do this, you can see that you have the option to narrow down to all of the different countries that you can advertise to on LinkedIn. There we go. Click done. And now every time you do it, it does not automatically refresh. You have to click search again. And now we're focused only on the US ads for iShare. Quite a bit different look here. We've got a mid-year update. We've still got some video ads in here, some stuff about a 401k. But let's start to see how we can investigate these ads. I really like ice cream, so let's say we wanna use this one. I'm gonna click view details, and you can't see it, but this opened a new tab in my browser. Every time you click view details, it's gonna open a completely new tab, so you don't lose your space in the other tab. But here we get to see more details about this ad. We can start to click through all of the different carousel cards that are in here. And we know this is a carousel ad because in this about the ad section, it says it's a carousel ad. The advertiser is iShares. And then it says it's paid for by Mindshare USA LLC, which is an agency. So sometimes you can actually see what agencies these companies use, which is pretty interesting. But as we're scrolling through here, you can start to see the entire message that we're looking at for this carousel ad. And depending on what you're trying to take away from this, you can have some decent insights about whether they add a link in their introductory message, if they tell any sort of story or some sort of progression with their carousel cards. But one thing I noticed that just interesting is that they don't change the text on each of the different carousel cards based on the messaging that's on it. It's all the same. Just says, look for potential retirement income streams. Not right, not wrong, just the way that they do it. So that's interesting. The last thing is that when we are hovering over one of these cards, you can see it in the bottom of the screen right now, I have this huge URL preview come up. We can actually click on all of these different carousel cards. I'm gonna go ahead and do it. Now we went to blackrock.com because BlackRock is in partnership with iShares on this one. I'm just gonna accept all the cookies because why not? But now we can see what this page looks like. So now we not only know what the carousel ad is, what all of the different text is on that creative and who's running the ad, but now we also can see what the landing page is. We can have some insights into how people are framing their messaging, what their calls to action are going to be, all sorts of things. We've got basically full access to this creative and to the landing page without having to do a ton of work to find it, honestly. But let's say for whatever reason, we don't wanna do something with BlackRock or real estate investment. Let's say we're trying to advertise about bonds. We're a bond advertiser and iShares does that as well, and we know it, but so far I'm not seeing any of those show up. That's when we can start to use the keyword section. I'm just gonna type in bond. We'll click search again. And now here are all the ads that iShares has run about bonds recently. It does seem like there's something going on with this carousel that's in the middle, but we can see high bond yields, talking about fixed income, no 401k. There's lots of different messaging that we have around bonds that we can get an idea of how iShares is positioning their offers and how it compares to ours. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there are some additional stats for ads that ran in the EU. So let's go ahead and try to find some ads that ran somewhere across the pond from me. So I'm gonna scroll down to Germany, uncheck United States first, come down to Germany, click done, now search. And now we can see all the ads that ran in Germany. It does seem like I can translate this page from German to English. Let's go ahead and do that just so I don't struggle too terribly much if it'll do it for me. So it adjusted all of the intro text that's here, but nothing in the actual image itself, which is fine. But this is just another tool that you can use if you're trying to spy on competitors, something like that, and understand how they're framing their message, but you don't speak that language. You can use Google Translate to at least help with some of it pretty quickly. Let's just go ahead and click on one of these ads. Let's click on this one all the way over to the right. Now here you see the expanded information for EU ads. We still have the ad format at the top, the advertiser and the agency that was in here, but we now have the dates. This ran from July 10th, 2023 to September 28th in 2023. You can see the impressions that it gained. All of the impressions were in Germany. There was very little in Singapore, but you can then see all the ad targeting that's in here as well. So this included anybody who had German language, lived in Germany, and then you can see inclusion targeting applied. You don't actually get to see who was in the target audience and how they built that audience, but you can see that there was some sort of audience included in there. So this is what it'll look like when you try and get additional information from ads that ran in the EU because of the different privacy regulations. The last piece that's in this filter option is gonna be the date. They've got some preset dates of any ads that ran in the last 30 days, anything in this month, 
this year, last year, or you can set a specific date range if you're really looking for an ad that you think you know when it ran and you're just trying to pull it up, or if you wanna see what they run during certain holiday promotional periods. So maybe we go back to 2023, let's say anything in November 1st through, let's go to December, I don't know, 31st. Last two months of the year, likely lots of holidays. See if they ran anything there. We'll click search. Couple ads show up. As I've mentioned, I don't speak German, but I don't think these necessarily have a ton to do with the holiday. So maybe there's nothing that they do that leans into that. But that's how you can start to use the LinkedIn ads library to understand who's doing what and when they are doing it. So overall, the LinkedIn ads library can be super awesome and helpful if you use it right. And it's not really rocket science how we can use this. Obviously first, we can spy on our competitors. We can see what they're doing, what they've done, how their messaging has changed over time and how we compare to it. We can also see what our calls to action are. Now we didn't talk about it a lot for these examples, but because you're able to see the full creative as well as the landing pages that any advertiser uses, you can see what calls to action they're offering and if they're giving any incentives for it. Are they doing all white paper downloads? Are they offering meetings with a sales rep? What types are they using and how does that compare to what you're using? But that's just for competitors. What about brands that you aspire to or look up to? You can easily start to get more ideas around creatives or messaging just by searching for major advertisers, maybe somebody like iShares, who has a worldwide advertising agency running their ads for them. There's no reason that you can't go out and review lots of different ads run by different companies and come up with new creative ideas of how to spice up your creative to look a little bit more like theirs and maybe take advantage of some of their creative legwork. Now the last couple I think are really important. They're a little less obvious. Landing page research is huge. Like I said, you can click on those ads and it'll take you to the landing page that that ad runs for. Why stop at just what the creative is and the call to action if you can actually see what the landing pages look like and try to compare yours to theirs? Are they user-friendly? Are they mobile-friendly? What are they calling out on that page that supports their call to action? And then lastly, understanding marketing strategy. In that last example I showed, we looked to see if there's any bond messaging that was happening during the holiday season in Germany. And it didn't really seem like there was anything that stood out. But if you know there are major events in your industry or certain times where people have sales, go back and look at just that time period. See if you can come up with any examples of them running ads that are offering something for, I don't know, in the US we just had Labor Day. Maybe they have a Labor Day sale or there's something coming up for end of the year planning. What are the different tactics they're taking throughout the year and how are they repositioning themselves as the year goes on to accommodate seasonality or accommodate change in the market, anything like that. So there's lots of ways that you can use the LinkedIn ad library to not only spruce up your own ads, but also understand how other companies are approaching advertising in the first place. And even though it might seem like a fairly basic tool and not super robust, maybe compared to other things, there's still a lot you can glean from it. So hopefully you're as excited about the LinkedIn ads library as I am after this video, and you'll start using it for your campaigns. But if you've got any additional questions about it or anything else on LinkedIn's ad platform, feel free to leave us a note in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the super thanks button.